Hello, beautiful butterflies. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm gonna give some, just a little bit of time to come on. Please let me know if you hear me well, if my audio is working right. I want to talk a little bit about the interview that I did last week or that I uploaded last week with D, how we spoke about self-acceptance on your gray hair journey, as well as I put a video up on Monday talking about self a self-love exercise that I love from Lisa Nichols. So you guys, I'd love to hear your feedback from that and then go into a little bit more detail as to how we can practice self-acceptance and self-love on our gray hair journey. Actually, the little thing on the bottom is letting me know that my mic is working. Just gonna fix the lighting a little bit. Today is also the day that I use. Hi, Ethelyn, how are you? It's also a day that I like to try and be intentional with being thankful for small things. So what are you thankful for today, Evelyn? How are you feeling? I found a quote on Pinterest. If you don't know, I am a quote lover and Pinterest is a quote lover's paradise. I found a quote on Pinterest from Mr. Rogers. We remember him from uh, PBS channel. <laughs> he said that very often we find that the end of something is the beginning of something new and better. He didn't say it exactly like that, but I thought that was a great quote to describe the gray hair journey. You said all is well, Evelyn. Hi, Christine. I'm glad you're doing better, Evelyn. What are you thankful for today? Something small. The medicine is working, okay. That's definitely something to be thankful for. It is really windy where I am today, so if you hear a little whistling, that is what that is. <laughs> um, I actually went on live earlier on my Instagram and somebody was from California and said it was like 80 degrees where they were. I was like, oh, how nice that would be. What are you thankful for today, Christine? And also, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the comments and I'll answer those questions for you. But to speak about the interview that I did with D and how with each interview, there seems to be a theme that comes up. And with even with um, Adelina's interview, there was something that she said that stays with me. And she mentioned um, she likes herself better now. She was like even more than she did before she started the gray hair journey, which I think is a beautiful gift to be able to have um, from that. And so Dee also said in her interview that she found that with her gray hair journey, she was not only stopped hiding her roots, but she also felt free to show her personality. Whether it's quirky or not, she was able to really just show up as herself. And so I think that that's an amazing gift. Evelyn or Christine, what would you say since being on the gray hair journey? Hi, Sheila, how are you? What are you thankful for today? We're talking about some of the gifts that come from, Evelyn, you said, she is, she, her hair is growing so much and you can tell, hi, home life love, is that Rachel? Let's see if my memory is working today. <laughs> You're feeling better this week. That's something to be thankful for. Thanks for sharing that, Sheila. I think that is Rachel. Yay, I got it right. I'm thankful I remembered your name. <laughs> 
What are you thankful for today, Rachel? Something small. Evelyn is thankful that her medicine is working. Sheila is thankful that she's feeling better. The effort that it takes to uh, focus on the things that we're grateful for is a really good place to, is a really good practice. And I'm realizing, what'd you say, Christine? You're thankful to be able to praise the Lord for this sunny day. It's a beautiful day, right? And it's funny because I try and teach my son, you know, with, with rainy days, um, there's some beauty in that too, beauty in the fact that it's nourishing things so that things can grow. Um, so we could find something good in everything. Hi, Star. How are you? Rachel, you said that you're grateful for life and love. What are you thankful for, Star? Thanks for sharing, Rachel. I'm thankful to be on here with you guys. You know, it's so funny when I first started uh, my first YouTube live a little while ago, I was prepared to be on here, just me, myself, and I. But um, whenever I see you guys come on here, it does make it so much more fun and enjoyable. So thank you for joining. Evelyn, you said, embracing your gray has taught you that your hair is not you. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And you know it makes me think of that song from NDIRE, We're Not Our Hair, right? Um, Star, you're thankful you're alive. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you, Evelyn, for kind of starting that direction. Um, our hair is a part of us. Uh, it's not a small thing or it's not like, it's not the biggest thing and it is superficial. But I feel starting from that outer thing started the inner work. <laughs> um, hi, Christine. What are you thankful for today, Christine? I am gonna look real quick for that quote that I was telling you guys about to make sure I get it right. Okay, Mr. Rogers, this is the this is the quote. It said, often when you think you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. And what you guys are mentioning, you know, you realize that your hair is not you. What starts off as this superficial thing, just stopping the dye with your hair, turns into something deeper. That inner self-acceptance, that inner self-love. Adelina says she loved herself more. Dee said she embraced all parts of herself, not just her hair, but her personality. And she felt more comfortable with showing people who she was because of her hair. So what starts off as something simple and you're right, Evelyn, it is not who we are. It's a part of us. It, it does trigger this deeper, this deeper, deep speaking to earlier was saying how the gray hair journey is almost similar to the natural hair journey. You know, there are some people who went, they never relaxed their hair or they stopped relaxing their hair way before it became popular or a trend. So similar with the gray, there are some people who I've met who've never colored their hair before. And they just like, to them, it's very simple. It's a, it's a process that, that has come up and they, they're not making it this big thing. Christine, I embraced all of myself when I started to become gray because I admire those with gray hair. I know it's a sign of wisdom. It sure is. And it's also a sign that we've lived. Right. And I, I remember seeing a quote that said, um, to embrace aging because it's a privilege that's been denied to many. Uh, Cheryl, hello, thanks for joining. You said you're grateful for everything because things that we perceive to be bad are learning tools in life. I love that, I love that because it's true. And, and it depends on our mindset, right? Which is one of the things I wanted to talk, to, talk about today on the live, self-love, self-acceptance, self how we speak to ourselves. How are you guys with that? I am definitely one who's very hard on myself, um, harder on myself than I am on others. And I have found that even something as simple as the way you approach your gray hair journey, the way you think about it, the way you talk to yourself can affect how smooth that journey is. Um, Cheryl, you said you're in the gray stage now but not have shown it yet. 
Okay, so does that mean that you were, um, that you're covering it? Like you have, I, I'm not sure if you had told me on another one if you were wearing wigs. And Rachel, you said, when you started to see your silver unpigmented hair, you searched for silver haired YouTubers to help you understand your new strands. Oh, I'm grateful you found me too. And you know, um, I did the same thing. When I went natural, I went on YouTube to look at other naturals and I found many naturals showing their, sharing their journey and what they did. And in a similar way, I found Samantha Pollock. She's another young, a woman of color who decided to embrace her hair. And it just, you just feel like you're not alone with it, which is nice. And um, it's also beautiful, even though I've reached the full transition from my colored ends, being able to be a part of other people's journey, especially from the beginning is like really, really nice. And what I have found with most people that I've seen, it's beyond, oh, my hair has grown out like seeing their inner transformation has been really beautiful. They've become more comfortable in their own skin. Can you guys relate to that, Evelyn, Christine, Cheryl? What are some of the things that you have, that was the beginning of something else for you, beginning of something bigger? And Rachel, remind me, how far into your gray hair journey are you? And also Evelyn, Remind me guys where you guys are at with your gray hair journey. Cheryl, you said yes, covering it. I am all, okay. You're all natural and figuring out what to do. Cheryl, if you don't mind me asking, do you happen to think sometimes that, you know, like you just said, you see that other people look beautiful with their gray hair, but for you, you just don't think it looks beautiful? Do you feel like that? That was something that I had mentioned in my interview with D that I've had so many people come up to me, whether it was when I went natural or gray, if my hair came out like yours, then I would do it. Have you guys experienced that or do you feel like that? Evelyn, you said it's like an, it's like an epidemic when I fully transition. Rachel, you said you have 40, 48 strands in the front and scattered in the back. I love how you counted them. <laughs> um, that's beautiful. And everybody's hair comes in differently. That's another thing that's been interesting. A lot of people, when they went on their gray hair journey, they had expectations of how they thought that their gray hair would come in, only to find that it was different and that they liked it. Cheryl, you said yes. Yes. So I'm guessing that was the answer to that question that I just asked. Um, and this is why I wanted to talk about the topic of self-love and self-acceptance, because I want to be an inspiration to others to embrace wherever they're at with their um, hair journey. But at the same time, I don't want us to have the condition that, well, if it looks like this person's, then I'll accept it. Then I'll like it. Because then that can make our journey really difficult, right? Cheryl, you said you say the same thing. Evelyn, my daughters gave me the confidence. I really am so happy um, that there are those of us who have such support from family and friends. There was someone who I spoke to who said that they didn't like their hair, but their mate was like, you look beautiful, and they encouraged them. So I think it's nice, too, that um, we have others who can like support us through it until we start to feel that way. Star, you said, I don't know if it is because of my age, that I'm struggling how I see myself with gray hair. Thank you for, for sharing that, Star. You're not the only one. Um, I was actually speaking to my sister-in-law the other day. I'm gonna be doing an interview with her soon so you guys could meet her. But she was just mentioning how it's not, it, it's what the gray represents to her, that she's aging and that is hard. And um, Cheryl, let me see what you said here. You said you actually go up to people and tell them how beautiful they look in your in their gray. Aw, you said you love yourself. You just don't know what to do with it. Your husband says that it looks nice. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, and this is nice to be able to kind of work through or talk to you guys about. 
Have you guys ever heard of mirror work before? Um, it's it's really simple. I mean, we all do a, a sense of mirror work. You you before you leave the house, you look in the mirror, make sure you don't have anything in your teeth, um, in your nose, <laughs> in your eyes. Um, make sure that your hair doesn't look all out of whack. But how many times do we stop and look in the mirror and take a look at our own self and say something positive to ourselves? Especially as women, we talk a lot in our head. And I think that there's so many things that we're saying that's not supporting us. And I am all for having people on the outside to support us and tell us things that are encouraging and positive. But I think it's so much so much more important for us to hear that too. I heard a quote that said, don't always believe what you think. <laughs> and that you're when you speak to yourself, like your body is listening, meaning that you know, you will respond to the thoughts that are going on in your mind. If you're thinking, I don't look beautiful, I'm not enough, you know, like your whole posture will show it, right? But another thing that has been interesting with a lot of women who are gray now, they say that they're getting these compliments, but people are also seeing in them this confidence because of what they've embraced. Christine, you said yes to your question. People have asked me, how do I feel going gray? I love it. It reminds me of my grandmother's beautiful gray mixed hair. And I don't want Cheryl or Star for you to feel bad if you're not where other people are at where it comes to the confidence and wanting to show it. Um, it's also important and loving and compassionate to allow yourself the time that it will take to embrace something that is way different than what you're used to. So I think that this is why too, I like to do the videos, not just purple shampoos and um, you know how to transition in a practical way, but also how to take care of yourself emotionally on the journey. Not everybody needs this kind of emotional support. They're just like, I stopped dyeing my hair. It's not a big deal. But there are those of us who it is a big deal. And so I wanted to come on here and give some practical tips in that way to help with the inner transformation sometimes that needs to happen before we can feel even more comfortable with the outer. Evelyn, you said, even when I'm looking a hot mess, I laugh at myself. <laughs> uh, Cheryl, I think that when I go gray, I can't go back. It's a mindset. Mm. So Cheryl, you said that you are covering up your gray. So your hair is already gray, but you haven't, you haven't, everybody else doesn't know it. Is that what you're saying? And are you saying that, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. When, you, when, when you, when I encourage you or others encourage you to try out going gray, you, you do have a choice. If you'd like to color it again or wear your wigs again, you can, but something that I think that we fail to realize is you won't know how something will be until you try. And just because you try doesn't mean like, oh, it's out now, I'm feeling awesome. There's gonna be some times where you feel a little doubt or feel nervous, but you know, being able to push through that can also bring confidence. So confidence is not necessarily like, I'm starting at confidence. You start at nervousness, you start at doubt, you start at insecurity, and with time, you get confidence because believe you me, I was not like, I will, I can't say that I was as confident as I am now when I first started. Hi, Sheik G. This is your first time watching. What's your name? I'm Nina. You said it's been two months for you since you put a rinse. You suffered an allergic reaction and you plan to embrace your gray. You're 49 and struggling. Well, you're not alone. There are others who are struggling with it too. So you're in the right place because I wanted to talk about some practical things that you can do to help you emotionally. Because, you know, honestly, to go gray doesn't involve, it's not that complicated. You just stop dyeing your hair and you let your hair grow as it is. But obviously there's a lot of inner turmoil that we can go through before making that decision while we're, while we're, in the midst of the journey and committing to it. And I think that women just need that emotional support with. Cheryl, 
you said, what are the rules on taking care of it? I mentioned purple shampoo. Okay, I'm going to get to that, Cheryl. Thank you for asking. Christine, yes, you're right. We do a lot of talking in our head, but I found I need to speak it out loud. That is true. And so when you're in the mirror and you look at yourself, I meant to bring my mirror with me on here. Um, I do have a video where I am um, doing like a demo with an actual mirror in my hand. If you guys are interested in that, please let me know in the comments and I could send you a link to that because it's important. Like you said, we say so much in our mind. Actually, we will probably be surprised if we wrote down or we said out loud the things that we say silently in our head. We would not allow anybody to tell us some of the things that we say to ourselves. And to me, when I speak a certain way to myself, that's not the most loving. It's not, it's not like, it's not abusive or like, you know, I'm horrible or anything like that. But, you know, just, just things that I say to myself, like, ah, oh, or comparing myself to someone else or, um, just little comments or not enough reassurance and encouraging words is just as damaging um, to our inner inner peace, you know, that that esteem that we need to have about ourselves. Um, so I'm glad that you said that, Christine, to say it out loud, to say, and even when it comes to emotions that you have, like feeling afraid or feeling insecure, to be able to look in the mirror and say, I feel scared. I don't know if I want to do this. Like sometimes just putting it out there is almost like releasing it instead of holding on to it. What do you guys think? Is that too weird to speak to yourself in the mirror and say things out loud like Christine said? Cheryl, yes, you haven't exposed it yet. Okay. And Evelyn, I think some of us still needs the approval of others. Beat that face and stretch yourself like a rooster. Yes. And I also want you to know I am a recovering people pleaser and someone who does worry about what people think. If you see my other videos for tips on going gray, I mentioned that, you know, there are some people who are like, don't care what others people don't care what other people think. And for me, I found that very hard, like to not do it at all. Now, when it does happen, I try and work through that, but I can't say that I never worry about it. So if you I think it's normal to want other people to approve of a choice that you make, but not to the point that I'm not going to do what feels right for me to get the approval of someone else. But I do think that for me, at least, that is definitely normal. Hi, Lakia. I'm embracing my gray hair and I'm natural. I love seeing my gray hair when I have a nice twist out, but I do have my days. Thank you for sharing, Lakia. Thank you for being on the live. Cheryl, how do we get in contact with you by email? Um, you can email me at nina at naturallygraceful.com. Let me see if I could put that here in the comments for you. I would love to hear from you guys and be a support for you. Graceful.com. I think I did that right. So that's where you guys could, could email me at and I can send you that exercise that I was talking about. Um, hi, Crazy Curls. Hi, Janelle. Thank you for joining. And Cheryl, you said, I believe that this is my first time seeing this. You're welcome. I'm not sure where that was from. Sheik, Sheik please let me know your name if I'm saying it right. 90% of your roots are gray, about an inch of new growth. Your mom grayed early, so you're familiar. Yeah, my dad uh, prematurely grayed. I feel like that a big key factor with premature gray is genetics. Um, I didn't have it all over when I first started. I had a white patch first or a halo, as they call it. And then you have some, I forget who mentioned it earlier, who just get like on the top. Um, D, if you looked at my interview with her, she has gray hair just on the top. So she would be able to put her hair in a ponytail and you wouldn't be able to uh, see her gray hair. All right. Hi, Bridget. Welcome back. That is okay. You are not late when you're here. Thank you so much for joining. We're talking about some deep stuff today, Bridget. Um, I really appreciate everyone who was, uh, I feel it's courageous to share and be, I feel it's courageous to be vulnerable and share the things that you're going through 
with me <laughs> um, because then someone else who sees this knows that they're not alone. There are some people who are trailblazing this journey and they're they're hitting the ground running and you know it's rough but they're getting through it and there's some of you who are on the fence some like Cheryl um who else did we mention here I think Star said that you know um it's a struggle to see herself with gray hair Star if you're still on here would you mind telling us what it is about seeing yourself with gray hair that's difficult and I'm going to guess maybe at what it could be that what it what gray hair represents to us. I feel like I know even for myself, I, I can't say that I'm not guilty of just thinking gray hair was just for people who are in their 70s or you know grandparents. Um to see myself in my 20s, early 30s with gray hair. And look, May will be my third year since I stopped dyeing my hair and my hair is a whole lot grayer all around than it was when I first started. So I still have moments where I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, wow. <laughs> and I think I don't realize it till I look back at other older pictures and I'm like, wow, my hair has grayed so much. I love it, but there is still moments where I have to, um, you know, recalibrate <laughs> what what I think of that, what that makes me think of. And I also mentioned in the interview that this gray hair journey for me is a stepping stone to accepting aging in general. I do admit that because I'm in my 30s, I still have a youthful look. But, you know, you can't escape gray hair. People could color it and all of that, but you can't escape it. It will come. And so will wrinkles and other things. And if I start myself on this journey of self-acceptance and embracing where I'm at, then I feel, again, it will help this next transition, what's coming up, to be a little bit easier. Let me know if you guys feel the same way. If you feel like this gray hair journey is a stepping stone to helping you accept other things. Evelyn, your battery's dying. Okay, thank you so much for coming on here. I'm glad your medicine's working and I hope you continue to feel better. Oh, it's chick. <laughs> okay, thank you, because I'm like chic. Okay, Carol, it's nice to meet you. So you mentioned, Carol, that you are natural and let me go back. Okay, you said that you had an allergic reaction. You're 49 and you're struggling. Chick, would you mind telling me what it is that is the hardest part for you with embracing this gray hair journey? Star, because you're 38. Well, Star, me and you are the same age, so I get it. Um, do you have people, Star, who tell you, girl, you're too young for all that gray hair. Where did all that come from? Um, it, it can be hard because sometimes some people who are older will tell me, well, of course you could go gray because you still look young, but we we who are young and gray have our own unique stuff that we're dealing with because we're like, I look young, but this reminds me of older. Is that what you, is that true for you too, Star? Okay, yes, all the time. Cheryl, believe it or not, you are a people pleaser. You used to be, you don't know how to take care of it, that which God called you. Okay, well, um, it's good that you're a person of faith because I, I am as well. And I feel that that truly helps me a lot. Um, we I know from my reading that uh, gray hair is a beautiful thing in, in God's eyes and it shows uh, wisdom and he calls it a beautiful crown. So that's something that helps me to change my perspective of what humans think about it to what he thinks about it. And I'm not going to get too much you know, into that part, but um, it's all about, this is why that quote was so important. Cheryl, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing practice to be able to change the way we think on things. Yes, you may be at a point where you're like, okay, I want to embrace the gray, but sometimes you might have to work on these thoughts that you have. Do you, does anybody like to write, to journal? Because I think, let me try and get it to some tips because I have maybe about 10 to 15 more minutes um, that you can do to help you or has that has helped me. Because again, I'm not an expert or a guru at all. I'm just sharing what helps me and in hopes that it's something that can be beneficial to you as well. And then you guys are also 
uh, welcome to share your tips too. Hi, Joy. And Rachel, you said women get a lot more feedback, negative feedback than men with silver hair. People notice silver on women and some ask what you will do about it. So true. So that is so true because even my own husband, he's never colored his hair. And it's funny because my dad is prematurely grayed and he grayed his hair for a long time. He grayed his hair. He colored his hair for a while and then he finally stopped. So it's not to say, it seems like men even struggle with gray hair. You know, you know the just for men, the color for them, for their beards and stuff. So I don't think that it doesn't affect men, but I do agree with you, Rachel, that for women, it's more looked at. I remember someone saying to me that they didn't want to look like their husband's mother, <laughs> you know, and, and I get that. But I'm so thankful that you know, even with my husband, like it wasn't even a second thought. He has a lot more gray than he did when we first got married. Um, and being in my relationship with my husband has taught me that men go through their little insecure stuff too. You know, we're, we deal with it a little bit more because we're more emotional, I feel. But um, I agree with you that there is a disparity between a distinguished silver fox, a male, and then a woman who is gray. But I do think that because a lot of women are embracing their gray hair, that has changed, that has helped change my perspective on it. Just from the exposure of seeing so many women who are young with gray hair. So for those of you, uh, Star, you're 38. We're going through some growing pains with being young and gray, but we're helping those that are younger and who will come to our spot soon to be like, you know what? There are people I know who have gray hair. It, you don't see it as much now. A lot of people color their hair. And from the interviews I've been doing, a lot of people have grayed in their teens and we wouldn't know because we've all been coloring. So let me get to these comments. Joy, you, Rachel, you agree with her. Rachel, you journal, awesome. Joy, you're a journaler too, cool. My hair has turned a different color and you need to know about maintenance. Okay, so what color has your hair turned, Cheryl? Because one, there's something called grombre, which is basically the color <laughs> of the gray transition, I feel, the rainbow of the gray hair transition. I dyed my hair black when I was deciding to stop dyeing my hair because I wanted it to be all one color. And that didn't make a, a difference because when my hair grew out, it was like black, brown, orange, reddish, and then my roots. Um, so we have to realize that when it comes to hair and really understanding what happens when we gray, the melanin either stops or it fades with time. So that can affect the color of what our hair looks like. And the products we use, the heat, if you put heat on your hair, all those things can affect it too. Rachel, you said, yes, you're right. Janelle, you feel the same way when you were younger. Gray hair always was connected to being old. Even now, becoming older is not all the way accepted as it should be. And that's so true. And I love, Janelle, that you said, for you, I think when it comes to gray hair, you're feeling a bit more um, open to when it comes up. I, that has been really encouraging to hear from those who aren't gray like me. My sister included, who's 10 years younger than me, she sees her gray hair and she's just loving it. She doesn't have, um, she's not trying to color her hair, which I think is like amazing. So we don't know how we're helping to influence those who are younger that when they get older, again, if you want to color your hair, that's a choice. But if you don't, now you know that there are others and what it looks like, the possibility and opportunity. Overall, embracing the gray hair is definitely a step in the right direction to accepting ourselves in the journey to come. Well said, Janelle. The more I think about it, I really think that it is that it is keeping it up. What products do I use? Okay, Cheryl, I'm coming for you. Janelle, it's people like you, Nina, that excite me about going gray. Thank you, Janelle. Christine, gray hair is a crown of glory. Yes, yes. Um, Cheryl, you have no dye in it. It's totally natural, a brownish cast. You're white in the front, brown in the back, mixed on the sides. Okay, Cheryl, so how long have you stopped dyeing your hair? Because um, if you look at Adelina's page, 
um, and look at the Silver Sister community on Instagram. There's so many women chronicling their growing out process and what it looks like so that you could realize that it's a natural part of growing your hair out. If you don't just cut it off, your hair is going to go through some different colors. Now, the purple shampoos is a part of the color theory. Purple seems to cancel out yellow. So if you have yellowing with your, uh, your gray hair, which is another thing I'm going to tell you guys that I'm learning to accept because, you know, y'all know I love the Pantene purple shampoo. I love my purple hair products to try and brighten my gray as much as I can. But um, sometimes our diet, if you're taking medication, the sun, pollution, so many different things can affect the color of our hair and things that we probably didn't even notice because our hair was pigmented before. But now um, I'm actually Cheryl. I want you to stay tuned. I believe in a week or two, I'm going to do a video telling you about all the products that I use for my hair, whether it's natural, you know, because I'm natural or for gray hair. So that can give you more tips as far as products. But I do want to make sure I cover the exercise that I would like you guys to try, Cheryl and Star. Those of you who watch this afterwards who are dealing with just the emotional turmoil that going gray can bring up for you. Chick, you said age is your issue. You don't want to look like your hubby's mom. So you deal with that too. So again, guys, I want to stress the importance of what we say to ourselves. You know, when we say things like, I don't want to look like my husband's mom, something that I learned, not necessarily from going gray or natural, but from cutting off my hair, doing a big chop two times, left me feeling very vulnerable and feeling insecure because I didn't want to look like a boy. And I, when the first time I got my hair cut really short for the first time in my adult life in 2011, I looked in the mirror and I saw my daddy's face <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I felt so like out of place. And I was worried if other people were going to think that. And I want you to allow space in the beginning if you're feeling doubtful that you're 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 going to feel like oh people are going to think I'm old or this this or that and i want you to either do two things if you're a journaler or someone who likes to write write down your feelings write down i feel like i'm going to look like my hubby's mom write like release all of those fears and negative thoughts that you have about this experience i think that that's an important thing Acknowledging something that is normal in human, fear, insecurity, uh, what's another one? Those are two biggies, fear and insecurity. And then once you acknowledge that, release it. Write it down, go in the mirror, look at yourself in the eye and say those things out loud. Uh, talk to somebody about it. Um, and then the next thing, once you get those things out of the way, is to affirm. And the last video I did from Monday talked about a self-love exercise that I love from Lisa Nichols that helped her in a difficult spot in her life. But I feel that it could be applied to the gray hair journey. It's a mirror exercise that she did for 30 days. She looked at herself in the mirror. She said her name and she said seven different statements for three different categories. First, she told herself what she was proud of. Then she told herself what she forgave herself for. Then she told herself what she commits to. So when it comes to the gray hair journey, I'm proud that I want to stop the dye or I'm proud that I'm willing to try this because you can try it and change your mind. You have options, okay? You're not stuck with just, you know, stop dyeing your hair that it has to stay that way. You could still wear your wigs again if you need to, but at least commit to trying. Because again, myself and other women who have gone gray, I'm sure can tell you, you don't know until you try and until you get past a certain point. I didn't feel this way the first couple of months. My hair was short and it was all different colors. But being able to remind myself of, oh, that was a um, water bottle. Going to yourself in the mirror, writing things down, affirmations. Affirmations are like truths that you say to yourself. We affirm ourselves all the time or negatively affirm ourselves. Um, so tell yourself, I think Evelyn said this, that she is not her hair. 
The color of your hair does not define your beauty. The texture of your hair does not define your beauty. Janelle, I'm sure you agree with that too, being a curly, uh, curly sister. So being able to remind yourself of what your truth is, because we could get so caught up in all these, well, what about this? And what about that? How can I change how I look at aging? You know, I'm not saying that aging and the aches and the pains and the things that come with it are all like, bring it on. But again, aging shows that I've lived life. It shows that I have experiences and memories. Um, aging shows that I've gained some experience in life and wisdom and things that I have to share. So like shifting the focus from the negative to the positive. Um, and I think someone else mentioned here before about how negative things or difficult things or challenging things that come up for us can wind up being learning tools. So I'm thankful that this gray hair journey is teaching me how to be patient. I'm grateful that, you know, I got a compliment the other day on my hair. You know, I forgive myself for not being patient on this journey. I forgive myself for forgetting that, you know, beauty is not defined in the physical. It's so much more than that. So let me know what you guys think of those tips that I gave. Like I said, there is a video I did on Monday. I put my email here somewhere so that you guys could email me if you'd like to get the actual demo of the exercise. Let me see what you guys have said. Janelle, you said a video on the products I use and recommend once you are great is a video you can save. I will definitely do that because I've tried some new things this year that I'm adding from the last video I did about my products. So I'll definitely do that. Cheryl, you said it's maintenance. You hope, what, what maintenance, Cheryl, do you feel will be with the gray hair? Because it's not as much maintenance as when your hair is dyed, but I'm trying to see what you mean by maintenance. You do journal. Yes. Get your paper out. It's it's old school in this digital age to get a pen and paper out. It doesn't have to be. Now, I'm a writer who could write like 10 <laughs> pages of thoughts and how I feel. I'm not telling you that you have to do that. Just release those things that you're feeling pent up. Get it out of your head. Put it down on paper. And Lisa Nichols has another exercise that she calls something about the lies because we we tell ourselves lies sometimes and so if you think i'm gonna look old you could write that down and then she said write it down in pencil and then get a red pen and cross it out you know like it's it's a it's a um what's that word i'm looking for it's a symbolic practice to kind of like recalibrate our mind and the way we think it's so much deeper than just the hair. It brings up things about how we feel about ourselves, how we're accepting ourselves, and saying affirmations like, I can accept however my gray hair grows in. I can accept however I'm gonna look with this gray hair. I know that my husband loves me for more than my hair. I know that I may feel I look like I'm gonna look like his mom, but I know that that's not true. My husband loves me for more than that. You know, like trying to reassure and affirm yourself. Cheryl, you said this has been very therapeutic for you. You just want it to be as easy as it was to take care of your hair, not gray. So I, I will, I, I see what you mean, Cheryl, and I'm not going to sit here because our hair can be different. I can't say that I find my gray hair more difficult to deal with, but that's not true for everyone. I did speak to someone recently who said that their gray hair had a mind of their own. So again, Cheryl, give yourself that space to try it see how you like it. And if it doesn't work for you, you have options. Sometimes I think we get so caught up in, okay, if I do this, then I have to stay that way. And then like, we just get stuck in the middle. So you can try it. And if it doesn't work for you, you can go back to what works for you. Joy, Lisa Nichols, she's so good, isn't she? I, she just has this, just her story. When I found out about that exercise, I I can't say I've done it for 30 days straight. And it's actually something I was thinking about doing for you guys who are watching or for anybody who watches after, would you be interested in doing like a 30 day challenge with me? Cause she did do it for 30 days, um, that exercise. So let me know in the comments if you would be willing to join that challenge with me. Chick, you said, thank you. This was helpful. I'm so glad. And again, you guys help me 
to bring out what is valuable by letting me know the things that you're struggling with. So I thank you guys so much for being vulnerable enough to let me know what you're working with. All right, Joy, I got one. <laughs> um, Christine, you said you saw that video. She is, she is. And um, because she's talked about her experience that came from such a painful place, I think that's why that meant so much. I mean, the title of her video, she said, is how to rediscover you. Because as I mentioned in the other video, what I love about it is it's a chance to check in. We we make so many decisions and we think that we should, it should be easy to do, but the fact that it's difficult might mean that we have to do some deeper reflection. Like, okay, why is this so hard for me? What's coming up for me about this? And again, it doesn't mean that because you do all that, you're going to be like, sign me up for the gray train. This is something I feel like I tell you guys, most people know me for the gray hair. I took a poll. Most of you are on here for gray hair journey, but I am more than just here. And my main goal is to encourage you to show yourself more love and compassion, whether you're on a gray hair journey or not, natural hair journey or not, mom or not. Um, I just speak from those places because that's my experience. Um, but it's important to be loving to yourself. It affects how you look at things. It affects your relationship with others. It definitely helps the journey to be a lot smoother. Cheryl, you said keeping the color true. Okay, I'm challenged with taking care of my natural. I had perms since high school and I'm trying to get the right products for the natural now. I need gray products. So Cheryl, it's also hard because you're you're going through two things at the same time. S excuse me. So did you start a natural hair journey and gray hair journey at the same time? And you're wearing wigs to get you through that transition? Joy, you said you're ready to go on the gray train. Choo-choo. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. You are not late. I'm going to be on here for a couple of more minutes. Um, and you know, you could always go and check out the live on the replay. Um, Sandra, you always give such insightful uh, comments. I really appreciate it. I was actually looking at a comment you left on one video I did about gray hair myths. And I actually wrote it down as something I wanted to talk about. Um, you had said, you had said that you're a journaler, right, Sandra? Because I talked to different ones on here about journaling. And you had mentioned in a comment to ask yourself what old means to you, like doing some reflection on that. And things that, again, instead of thinking, my therapist had told me this. She was like, you're so focused on all the things that will go wrong that you are missing out on thinking of all the things that could go right. And again, Lisa Nichols says this too, where you, where your focus where your focus goes, your energy grows. I think that's something that she said, or, or that's the way she said it. Basically, wherever you put your energy, that's going to grow. So if we're worried about looking old, we're, we're worried about all the things that could go wrong, that's going to just feed those tough, challenging emotions as opposed to, I'm excited to see how it will work. Um, and I did have a some quotes that I had on another live, please also let me know in the comments if you would like to uh, get those comments. I mean, those, those quotes. So maybe instead of thinking of that, what do I look forward to when I age? And I, I have been seeing some beautiful women, you know, 50 is not old. It's older than I am, but it's not old. But um, these women don't look what I would think 50 looks like. And they make getting older, not so scary for me because there's so much more to just your hair color that can make you look old. Let me know if you guys agree with that or not. Sandra, you said self-love is affected by strong society values on aging. Yes. Is your definition of old the same as others? Does old mean change? Oh, love that. Does old mean change? And it just in general, change can be hard to accept. It can take some time. But when we let go of stop trying to change what's going to happen, we will find more peace um, and acceptance that comes with that. Thank you for sharing that, Sandra. Uh, Rachel, yes to the quotes, okay? And Sheila, 
Thank you for letting Cheryl know what you use. Giovanni Eco Chic Natural Products. Yes, using white products definitely is helpful. Now with Cheryl, it's a little bit hard because if you're in the transition and your hair hasn't fully grayed out yet, it doesn't matter to me the products that you use. That, that is a tough part of going through the process. I know um, some people have talked about using braids or things like that to kind of help there. Adelina did that um, to be able to help through that grown braid process. But if you look at Adelina's hair now, it's like, I think halfway gray. And then the rest is like this light brown. So that part of the transition is hard to be affected by um, products that you use. As far as being natural, I love the Shea Moisture products. Um, I'm going to put a link to the video that has my current products that I use, Cheryl. And then, like I said, I'm going to do an updated one, letting you know the uh, products that I use. You said you grade first while you were under the wig. You're 67 and have been married for 47 years. And I know your hubby loves you. All right, Sheila 67 too. Head wraps. That's a good one, Sheila. That's another... Um, if you're not into weaves or um, um, you, you know using hair, you can use head wraps. That you guys saw when I was doing the finger coils, that was really great for me. So guys, I'm gonna be wrapping this up. You guys made this live so amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you who are new subscribers, who have just come on here, who just met me today. Who was that who just met me today? I think that was Lakia and Chick. Thank you guys so much for joining the live and leaving such insightful comments. Hi, Lois. You're concerned about thinning and balding. Okay, that's something that we're gonna talk about as well. I will um, cover that on another live. Um, Rachel, thank you so much. All of you guys, Rachel, Sheila, Cheryl, Star, um, Lakia, Joy, Christine, who else? Janelle. Uh, I think I got everybody. If I missed you, thank you, Evelyn, who came on. Thank you guys for making the live what this was. This will be so helpful for those who are watching on the replay, especially if they just even to know that they're not alone. You have some that this gray hair journey is relatively smooth for them, but if that's hard for you or you're on the fence, please don't shame yourself. It's okay. Um, there's plenty. You're not alone. And um, I hope that these tips were helpful for you guys so that you could realize, like our friend Mr. Rogers said, often when you think you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. And that something else can be way better than you imagined. So just give it a try. Work on how you talk to yourself. Use that mirror. We use it every day to brush our teeth, to do so many things. Just take, even if it's just five seconds, which we all have, and look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. Like you're trying, you're doing this, you know, like those little things to help pick you up. We are more than our hair um, and what color it is and, and what texture it is. Um, hugs to you guys too. Thank you all so much. So let me know your feedback on this. Let me know those of you who would like to join me in March for a 30-day challenge to do that Lisa Nichols exercise. Let's work on strengthening the inner. And that is something that will then be something for everyone to see. I think beauty and that feeling of love for ourselves starts from the inside out. So thank you, Bridget. Thank you, everyone. I hope you guys have a compassionate rest of your weekend, and I look forward to seeing you guys on my next live. I also meant to tell you that next month is my one-year anniversary of being on YouTube, so I have something special coming up for you guys. And if you'd like to be the first to know about what that is, you can go to my website. I'll put that in my link, uh, the description. Sorry about that. And uh, you could sign up for my newsletter, and that way I send those out each week. You can know what's coming up for March. All right? So thank you guys so much for your support, and you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye.